Thank you for watching this Mental Health Matters video. My name is Joyelle Marston. I am a licensed clinical social worker and I work for Putman County School District as a mental wellness counselor. I am here to talk about missing loved ones during the holidays. Holidays can be a great time for kids to have fun, to spend time with family, and to enjoy family traditions. Holidays can also be a hard time for families and kids when they're missing someone because they died or family members aren't present because of divorce or incarceration. The children are noticing that the family is not all together as they have been in previous years. Kids can respond differently to loss depending on their age and level of development. Infants and toddlers are not going to understand death. They will pick up on how their caregiver is feeling. Take care of yourself and that will help them feel better. Preschool age children are not able to understand the lasting nature of death. Be prepared for questions over and over asking when the person will be back. They are also concrete think thinkers. I recommend that you avoid using language such as the person passed on or they went away or they went to sleep. Be clear that we are not going to be able to see the person anymore at this time or something to that effect. Sharing your family's beliefs, i.e. heaven, for example, may help them. For children, their feelings and thoughts come out in their play. It's a good time to see how they're feeling and play with them. School-aged children are starting to understand that death is final. They also start to worry that their caregiver and others they love might die and leave them alone. Teens understand death like adults and they struggle with emotions over the finality and unfairness of losing someone they love. This could result in pulling away from people they love impulsive, reckless behavior. For other situations like divorce or incarceration, it's important for adults in their lives to be honest about why the person is not present. Keep it age appropriate and you don't need to share unpleasant details, just the facts. For example, in a divorce situation, children may wonder why mom and dad can't be present for the holiday and be all together as a family was before. It's appropriate to tell them that mom and dad are not together anymore, which means they will do holiday celebrations separately now. However, be sure to validate the child's feelings by acknowledging that they may be feeling sad or angry about this, that it's hard, that it will take time to get used to doing holidays different. And even though you aren't together anymore, it doesn't change the fact that you're still their mom or dad. Now that we've learned a little about how different age children understand grief, how do we get through the holidays with these little people who have sadness, anger, and confusion? While we're also having similar feelings and might really want to forget the holidays altogether. Our young ones need support and guidance on how to deal with loss, sadness, and grief. It's okay for our children to see us sad, to hear us talk about our feelings, and yes, even anger. Do not ignore the person who has died. Think of a way that your family can honor and represent the person without making the day all about their passing. One of the projects I do with kids is to have them make an ornament for a Christmas tree that represents their relative that has passed. This is an opportunity to start a new tradition for families separated due to divorce, loss, or incarceration. Making ornaments together can start the person talking about their memories. So I brought some examples. You can buy an ornament that the top can come right off from Dollar General, anywhere like that. And what you do is you can find paper, any materials around the house, I use ribbon. And I have them pick a ribbon that reminds them of a memory or a feeling that they had with a person. And then they share that thought and then they put it inside the Christmas ornament. And then the magical part is I buy these little bells. And this represents all the Christmas memories, happy memories that they have with a person. You might wanna stop them before they use all of them. And you put the cover back on and you put it on the Christmas tree. So it's representing the person without having to nonstop talk about them. And every time they walk past, usually it jingles. Now, if you don't have these, if you have beads that you might've used at one point to make friendship bracelets, those also work and they also make noise. Something about the making noise, kids really seem to like that. Okay, another project that you have like a mason jar or anything around your house, then you take a mason jar, or you can also get them at a dollar store, and you can take 
thin paper or thick tissue paper, draw or write happy memories, and then use glue, Mod Podge, to attach the paper to the jar. Once completed on the outside, you can put a battery light, candle, or small string lights into the jar. And now the child has something to put next to the bed that can light up and then remind them of all their happy memories. While engaging in the project, it is a great time to talk about memories, feelings, and talk about how everyone expresses feelings differently. But you are all together to support each other. Ask them if there are ways they want to honor the person who is not there. If there is a favorite dish the person used to make, make it as a family. It's about giving time to share emotion while continuing to enjoy the holiday. Your child might have to be told that it's okay to be happy and it's okay for you too and have fun even while they're sad. Give a child, yes, even an angry teenager, a hug and listening can go a long way. If you have a teen that does not like to talk, take them for a long drive somewhere with no cell service. They'll start to share and talk. Take care of yourself. Do not try to have the perfect holiday season. Make sure you sleep, eat, and allow yourself to grieve. If you are not okay, then your kids won't be okay. Allowing yourself to be human and express emotions appropriately in front of your children is a great way to model healthy, healthy coping. It also reinforces the message that it is okay to have feelings. I hope this helps. If you're interested in more projects to do with your kids, I suggest going to Pinterest. Have a great holiday.